On August 4th, 1955, the city of Freeport was born. During the early 1950s, American investor Wallace Groves had a vision to transform the Pine Barren forests of Grand Bahama Island into a well-planned, developed city. In his own words, there were too many disadvantages to doing so, but none that could not be cured by planning, work, and money. As in other matters, Groves was a visionary seeing ahead of his time. Joined by British financier Sir Charles Hayward, their vision for development led to negotiations with the government of the Bahamas and the signing of the monumental Hawksville Creek Agreement over 50 years ago. The agreement mandated that the Port Authority dredge a deep water harbor and also be responsible for the provision, management, and administration of all infrastructure, municipal, and community services and development within the original 50,000 acres of crown land that was granted, which was later extended to 138,000 acres and now encompasses 160,000 acres known as the port area, or 230 square miles of the island's entire 530 square miles. Having a major objective of establishing an industrial community in Grand Bahama, the Port Authority was to further promote and encourage the establishment of factories and industries to benefit the Bahamian economy and provide employment for the colony's citizens. The agreement also conveyed to the area the legacy of a free port, with substantial tax concessions for financial, commercial, and industrial enterprises for a standard British leasehold period of 99 years until 2054. As the Hawksville Creek Agreement allowed the Port Authority to choose the name of their town, Groves chose the self-descriptive name of Freeport. When I arrived in 1968, there was nothing downtown. One of the first buildings that got put up actually was the post office. Uh, and then I built the first Regent Center and obviously it continued after that and then the Royal Bank got built and uh, Mr. Baker and there were very few buildings uh, there was the Port Authority building downtown Barclays Bank the Seasum Manor which is now bulldozed down Jansel Court and the pub on the mall across the road from the pub on the mall was just finished the uh, International Bazaar the island in general was booming. We have probably the best roads in any island in the Caribbean. We have the infrastructure. You've only got to look at Nassau. At least here, we say we're in a traffic jam, but the most of the traffic jams last five minutes. Go to Nassau, how long they last there. That's not just the reason. I, I think we've got a more upscale quality of life here. Yes, we are going through hard times, but I'm sure that will blow through eventually. And uh, seen vast changes in 40 years, vast changes. The Grand Bahama Port Authority fulfilled all of the mandates required under the 1955 agreement within the specified period. Primarily, the dredging of a deep water harbor at least 400 feet in length and 27.3 feet in depth was accomplished within three and a half years of the signing. Freeport's Harbor now has 8,205 feet of berthing space and a depth of 52 feet, making it the deepest along the entire eastern seaboard of the United States. To allow access and egress, along with a deep water port, an airport opened in Freeport in the late 1960s. A power plant was also commissioned. The tremendous impact of the port project was evident. Hence, in a supplemental agreement of 1960, the government mandated the Grand Bahama Port Authority to promote, encourage, and establish a much wider mix of businesses as the government was satisfied that it would be economically beneficial to the Bahamas if other business enterprises could be created and developed. Other enterprises like tourism, gambling, residential, and real estate development. The 1960 amendment brought the Bahama Cement Company the Grand Bahama Development Company, or DEVCO, in 1961, and several schools, like St. Paul's Methodist College in the early 1960s, Mary Star of the Sea, 1960, Freeport High School in 1965, and Catholic High School in 1966. In 10 years, by 1965, the Grand Bahama Port Authority had fulfilled the original mandates and all additional obligations required under the 1960 amendments. The government, 
being desirous of encouraging and facilitating further development, again amended the Hawkesbow Creek Agreement. Under the 1966 Supplemental Agreement, the Port Authority was required to construct or procure the construction of 1,000 low- and middle-income homes, build schools to accommodate 1,400 students in the Pinders Point, Lewis Yard, Hunters, Eight Mile Rock, and Port Area, construct two medical clinics in the Port Area and Hawksville, extend water lines to Pinders Point, Lewis Yard, and Eight Mile Rock, and contribute $10,000 towards the cost of town planning by the government in West Grand Bahama. This 1966 amendment brought even further growth with unprecedented touristic, residential, and industrial development. In 1971, a Royal Commission was appointed to review the Hawksville Creek Agreement. Their finding? Anyone visiting Freeport today will see an utterly different place from the Pine Barren it was before the date of the first agreement. It is now a vast, sprawling area displaying unmistakable signs of a carefully planned development. Its importance is fundamental. Without it, there would be no Freeport. In 1976, Sir Jack Hayward and Edward St. George acquired the interests of Wallace Groves and took over the Port Authority. Subsequently, in 1981, they bought all the remaining shares and privatized the company, ushering the Magic City into a new era. In 1951, the population in Grand Bahama was just over 5,000, under 6,000 people in the entire island. Today, we can see so, so many more people. The population has grown in leaps and bounds. And so certainly, without the Hawksville Creek Agreement, it could not have happened. There was not very much to come to Freeport for before the Hawksville Creek Agreement. Freeport began as an industrial undertaking. It was really for the development and construction and of a deep water harbor and turning basin. And the persons who came here to do that, they wanted their families to come. And so by extension, again, you had to have the churches, the um, hospitals, the schools, uh, the homes. And as a result, the, the development of Freeport grew from that of an industrial center to a developing community. Our location is key. The infrastructure is superior in every sense. And it didn't really cost the government very much. There was a lot of planning that was put into the development of Freeport, laying it out and planning it and all the zoning that took place. The Hawksbill Creek Agreement is the genesis of Freeport. What Wallace Groves merely envisioned in the 1950s unfolded on a grand scale over the following decades with these other two creative thinkers at the helm. Freeport was poised to reach yet another milestone in its brief but fruitful history when the Grand Bahama Port Authority entered into an agreement with the government called the Freeport Grand Bahama Act of 1993. Relief from real property taxes was granted until 2015 in consideration of numerous economic and social initiatives to be undertaken by the Port Authority. 21 mandates were given and true to form, not only were they all fulfilled, but we today enjoy the benefits of their implementation for ourselves, our children, and successive generations. Over the years, the Port Authority has had a very good relationship with the government and together uh, much has been achieved. The Port Authority has had some extension under the Hawksbill Creek Agreement and with the, with the extension which is going to expire in 2015, we were committed to do any number of things and I believe it is true to say that we have done all of those things. The very last one was that we were to build an arts and crafts center. Did they meet their obligations to the government under the Hawksbill Creek Agreement? I believe by and large they have done so. The rest of the Bahamas really don't know Freeport as well as they should. I believe Freeport, despite what you might hear elsewhere in the Bahamas, I think that Freeport is the future of the Bahamas. 
From the outset, Freeport was a master planned city with designated areas for specific types of development. Trade and industry would be established at a hub in the west. Touristic and residential growth were earmarked for the east along with real estate land holdings whilst the city core would house its commercial, financial, technological, and retail sectors. Today, we can proudly boast of having the deepest harbor and largest mega transshipment terminal in the Western Hemisphere, one of a select few of destinations with U.S. pre-clearance airport facilities and an 11,000-foot runway, world-class industrial tenants, miles of paved roadways and canal waterways, acres of beach and canal properties available for real estate development, reliable power, superior communication services, health care and educational facilities, a well-educated population who enjoy a high standard of living, and a structured regulatory framework that oversees proper running of the city. Freeport has been very, very important to the overall national development of this country. Uh, we know that uh, Grand Bahama Freeport has contributed to the national treasury in excess of $100 million uh, in the last, every year. Uh, in fact, we also know that in the Pokesbury Agreement itself, it, it mandates that uh, it returns 125% of the cost of uh, operating the government services here in Grand Bahama. As you know, Grand Bahama is a wide open, fully developed city with infrastructure to be envied in the region and I dare say around the world. Freeport offers access to quality education and infrastructure, residential and commercial, that is uh, enviable. We don't have to deal with the crime and the traffic congestions. Uh, the ease of doing business in terms of interactions with the regulatory agencies is just nothing to compare. Uh, when we talk about the cost of uh, real estate and the, the size of the properties that you can get for the same kind of monies that you would invest in Nassau, there's no comparison. And, and we're not talking about properties in, in, in rundown areas, we're talking about quality properties of wonderful size. If we look at our canal front system, we have the largest canal system uh, I think anywhere in the country for sure and probably in the region. Uh, this is the place to be. Our country's success is integrally linked into the triumph of the second city's industrial prowess. As the vision for Freeport continues to get brighter and brighter through successful partnerships with governmental and other agencies, the Grand Bahama Port Authority's new mission to better the lives of the Grand Bahama community and by extension the Bahamas through the unique features offered by our island has already begun to bear fruit. Fulfillment of the dream of its original creator has been passed on to a new generation of innovative leaders at the helm of the Port Authority. Young Bahamians who have benefited firsthand from all that Freeport has to offer and who are now working diligently to secure its future. One of the first goals of the Making It Happen initiative was to restore Freeport's city center by means of aesthetic and infrastructural improvements under an immensely successful downtown turnaround project. Additionally, much attention has been paid to encouraging entrepreneurship by means of several programs introduced through the Port's Enterprising Center. One year license fee waiver for new tenants in the International Bazaar have totally reinvigorated the store count, with many Grand Bahama residents becoming business owners and some for the first time. Other campaigns that have recently come on stream include licensee referral, warehouse storage space, shared office space, and insurance bond and franchising initiatives. These coupled with the relaunch of the Grand Bahama Port Authority's website and streamlining of licensing application, inspection, and approval processes have created an environment conducive to business development. Also, we are pleased to have joined forces with the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce by providing our economic development strategy to be incorporated with an overall strategy for Grand Bahama. Our strategy clearly identified short, medium, and long-term goals. With the continued partnership with the government of the Bahamas and the private sector, Grand Bahama is poised for success. As residents of this island prepare to compete within the global village, the Grand Bahama Port Authority Scholarship Program is committed to training and educating our youth to occupy niche careers within our country and beyond. As guardians of this fair city, the Grand Bahama Port Authority is proud of the role that we play in Freeport's success. Over the past 50 years, the Pine Forest has given way to a modern city that we call home. There have been challenges that residents have conquered with courage, resiliency and strength. Let's celebrate from whence we came and how we've grown. 
and may we eagerly anticipate and embrace the prosperity and success that we know the future holds.